Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years, turning our Bibles to Genesis and chapter 43. Chapter 43, we see that uh, Simeon was left behind with uh, Joseph and uh, the remaining nine traveled back to their father. And the famine was still very severe in the land. And they had eaten all the grain that they had brought from Egypt. And their father said to them, go back and uh, buy more food. But Judah said, um, we just can't go because uh, that man solemnly told us that until you bring your brother, you are not supposed to see my face again. And um, we can't go and buy food for you. So, But you said you will not send him. And so we cannot uh, go. Uh, and now Israel replied in verse 6, why did you bring so much trouble upon me by telling you that you had another brother? And then they say, um, we never expected that man to uh, ask us so closely. And he asked, is your father still living? Uh, do you have another brother? And we simply answered his questions. And how we uh, to know that that man will ask us to bring our brother? We didn't expect this. And um, then Judah says, uh, send the boy along with me and uh, we will go at once. And only then we and our children will not die uh, but live. Because anyways, if it, if at all you're not sending Benjamin, we can't go. And anyways, we are all going to die. And then in verse 9, he says, I myself will guarantee his safety. You can hold me personally responsible for him. If I do not bring him back to you, set him here before you. I'll bear the blame before you all my life. As it is, if uh, we had not delayed, we would have gone and come at least twice. Then their father said to them, okay, uh, I'm ready to send Benjamin. So we have to recognize something very important and peculiar here. In chapter 42, Reuben also tried to convince his father, saying, send Benjamin and uh, um, I will take him and I will... I will give you a guarantee that I'll bring him back. And if I don't bring him back, then kill my two sons. But you see, that could not really convince Jacob. But when Judah said that he would, he would take the blame upon himself throughout his life, uh, Jacob was convinced. What, what really would have been the reason that Reuben could not convince Jacob, but Judah could convince him? When you look back, um, you know, uh, uh, Reuben had uh, gone on uh, to his father's couch and he had sinned with Bilha after Rachel died. The Bible is very clear in a certain principle. It says, he who is faithful in little will be faithful in much. So you cannot expect somebody to be faithful in much if they are not faithful in little. And that's what is the principle here because he was not really faithful. He had done something that was so obnoxious and so uh, detestable that he had gone onto his father's couch. The father had it in mind because when he was blessing his descendants, we see in Genesis 49 that was still stuck in the back of the head of Jacob. And so our sin always, always, uh, you know, makes us lose trust from people and also uh, we are uh, makes us unfaithful to stand before God. God can never and God has never laid great treasures into the hands of unfaithful people. In fact, the Lord Jesus very clearly says, if you are uh, not faithful about this worldly wealth, how can, how can somebody tr entrust you with uh, real wealth or real riches? So uh, we see that the Lord always wants us to be faithful and um, he was not faithful. And when you come to Judah, Judah was also not faithful. But we see that Judah was trustworthy in one aspect. When Tamar sent uh, the uh, staff, the cord and the seal, he did not conceal it. He did not cover it up. He very openly said, you are more righteous than I. And uh, he stopped going to her. He never went to her again. So we see that uh, Judah was much more trustworthy than Reuben. And uh, when Judah said, I will 
um, bear the blame. It was it was something that was practical. Ru what Ruben was telling was obviously not practical. Ruben was telling his father, "Kill my two sons," which which definitely uh, Jacob would not have done, um, and uh, that would that would really not have happened. Genesis chapter forty two and verse thirty seven thirty eight. He says, "You may put both my sons to death if I do not bring him back to you," which is which is just uh, not practically possible, uh, and so that really doesn't suggest. Uh, any kind of trust and uh, so finally the father Israel says you know take some of the best products of the land uh, it is it's so peculiar that they were living in a land of famine and yet the little produce they had he was sending as a gift to Joseph now why was he sending it as a gift because Jacob had learned what a gift can do Jacob had given a gift to Esau Jacob uh, uh, had learned to uh, give in order to get things done so obviously in our life also we need to learn that we cannot gain everything at once even the Lord Jesus very clearly said uh, if a man gains the whole world but loses his soul, what use is it? So Jacob learned to give away temporal things in order to get valuable things. And now the favor of this governor was absolutely valuable and absolutely costly. And so what he was giving was a very, very small token. Uh, so um, he gave away, he gave away his sleep, he gave away uh, his strength in struggle with the Lord in order to get a blessing that is going to stand. So Jacob learned the secret of giving in order to receive. So we also, even the New Testament goes to the extent of saying it is, it is rather blessed to give than to receive. So we need to keep on giving, investing, because you cannot get everything at once. You have to lose something in order to gain something. No pain, no gain. And so uh, he, he sends them a gift and he says, uh, take uh, double the amount of silver with you. Now, they were, they were acting very, very honestly. The previous silver had to be returned and now they were taking new silver in order to purchase uh, the uh, remaining grain. And then uh, that is where Jacob prays and he says in verse 14, And may God Almighty grant you mercy before the man so that he will let your other brother Benjamin come back with you. As for me, if I'm bereaved, I'm bereaved. So we see that he was giving a gift and he was also depending on the Lord. And he prays and he says, may the Lord grant mercy. And he, he prays this prayer with a kind of a spine, uh, an iron spine, because uh, he trusts on uh, this God who caused favor in the heart of Laban, in the heart of uh, Esau. Uh, so God, God was, God had already caused favor in the hearts of so many people. And now um, Jacob believed that God can do even this. And that's why he sends them. And then uh, these people, they come to Joseph and then uh, uh, Joseph saw Benjamin. And he says to his steward, take all of these people home and prepare a meal and uh, slaughter an animal and they are to eat with me at noon. And as they all went to Joseph's house, now these people were frightened when they were taken into the house. They thought, uh, you know, we are being brought because of the silver that uh, was put back in the uh, first time in our sacks and uh, they will take us and make us slaves and also take our donkeys. What a mean understanding. Why would they take their donkeys? You know, Joseph was always uh, already almost the richest person in the land. Uh, he was he, he was in the uh, top-notch position. And why would they make these people slaves? And you know, it was their guilt that was pushing them to think this way. It was their guilt of their past that was really, really pushing them to think this way. And that's why uh, they immediately told the uh, steward, See, take, take off the silver. Um, we don't want it. We want to be honest. And then he said, okay, don't worry. Uh, in verse uh, 23, he says, your God, the God of your father has put your treasure into your sacks. I received your silver. Um, and then he brought out Simeon to them and um, he gave uh, water and uh, fought it to the uh, donkeys. And then they prepared uh, their gifts uh, for Joseph to arrive. And uh, finally, um, as Joseph arrived, he asked them um, how, how their father was. And uh, they all bowed down, prostrating themselves before him. This is where we see the dream of Joseph come true. 
and are deeply moved at the sight of his brother and all of this happening. He immediately hurried to a place and he started weeping. He started weeping. But but then he he washed his face and uh, controlling himself, he came back. He said, serve the food. And when they were serving the food, there are two things that we need to recognize. The first thing was uh, um, they served him by himself, their brothers by themselves. Everybody took their own because uh, the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews. Uh, the Egyptians uh, did not uh, like these people who slaughtered uh, or who, who were taking care of the animals because uh, um, that was a very detestable uh, thing for the Egyptians. And uh, um, so they could not eat with them. So the Egyptians thereby, uh, you know, uh, looked down upon the Hebrews. But yet, uh, we see when God increased them, when God brought them to food, um, they easily and they very willingly, they uh, very, very uh, happily agreed Joseph to be their ruler, knowing that he was a Hebrew. When God does things, it crosses all human boundaries. And uh, there was something that Joseph did to the astonishment of everybody. In verse 34, it says, Benjamin's portion was five times as much as anybody else's. And uh, so they uh, feasted and drank freely with him. So uh, we see that Benjamin was given five times more. And why was, why was this? Uh, it was it, it maybe it was because Joseph loved Benjamin and uh, he uh, out of his love he did it. But there was there could have been another very strong reason. Genesis chapter thirty seven and verse four it says when the brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. So maybe Joseph wanted to uh, test uh, seeing. Uh, that if if at all I give more to Benjamin, or do they have the same nature of hating Benjamin? Will they reject Benjamin? Will they become jealous of Benjamin? So step by step, uh, Joseph was testing uh, uh, his brothers to see uh, if there was uh, any real repentance, any real transformation. And uh, he wanted to really bless them. But he wanted to bless them um, seeing their transformation. And how many a times uh, we are running after blessing rather than a transformation. You know, transformation is always greater than a blessing because Jesus did not come into this world just to give us uh, some kind of earthly blessing that would uh, get rusted and uh, that would be eaten away by uh, moth and uh, be stolen away by thieves. No, God wants to bless us with a transformation that is going to make us uh, look like him, belong like him, and uh, that is going to uh, really transform us into his image. That is the real blessing that's going to stand. And Joseph was working on this blessing that is a change of transformation, a change wherein they would come close to God. Their, their lives of uh, godlessness would be transformed into a life that were filled with the fear and accountability to God. Gracious Heavenly Father, help us to be always, always uh, insightful that you are watching us and that we need to be right in your sight. Help us to struggle to be accountable to be able to overcome our human nature, our inherited sin, so that we can please you. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.